Hey everybody, today I'm going to review the Husky Silent Flow Air Compressor. Now this is a portable 4.6 gallon compressor that's very lightweight and it has some features built into it that you normally don't see on other air compressors. Now right off the bat I want to let you know that it does have an aluminum tank. Most of them have steel tanks that are very heavy and they're also going to rust internally. Because when you use an air compressor, the moisture that condenses will collect in the bottom. That's why they always have a drain. You need to drain that out to prevent damage to the tank. Now because this is an aluminum tank, even if you forget to do that or you don't do it very often, the water sitting in the bottom of here is not really going to hurt anything like it would with a steel tank and you're not going to have to worry about it rusting through. Now on top of that, it does feature a very quiet motor coming in at under 70 decibels which is going to be quieter than most person-to-person -person conversations. And really, if this is running in the side of the room and you're on your cell phone, the person that you're talking to is not even going to be able to hear it running. Now, what I want to do in this video is go over the different features that they have built into this. I'll show you how it would be most ideally used, and we'll see how it compares to some larger air compressors and other portable models. Here's a closer look at the compressor, and I do want to point out that it does have a stacked tank design. And both of these are going to be connected with a pipe on either side, which is welded to both tanks. That really makes it become one unit, and the pressure is going to be equalized between them both. Now the other good thing about this particular design, if any moisture forms in this top tank, it's going to go down through those pipes into the bottom tank, and then you can drain it using the ball valve that they have installed on the bottom. Now for long-term storage, if you don't want to store this in its pressurized state, you can also open that up, it's going to let out all the compressed air and equalize the pressure inside the tanks with the pressure outside. On the top of the unit, just underneath the handle, you will notice two different outlets, a red knob in the middle, and then two different pressure gauges. The first gauge here on the left is going to be the tank pressure to show you exactly how much air pressure is in the tank currently. And right now it has 120 PSI. On the right hand side is going to be the outlet pressure. The regulator knob is turned all the way down and that means that we're on zero PSI and neither one of these outlets have any air pressure behind them if we plug something in. Now if you ever have trouble connecting an air hose, because this side is going to show a lot of pressure like your tank side would, all you'll need to do is rotate this counterclockwise, it's going to remove the pressure from these outlets and it's going to make connecting everything a lot easier. Once you connect everything, then you can rotate this knob clockwise and it's going to pressurize the outlets as well as your lines. Now to show you how simple that is to do, we can grab one of the knob, just rotate it clockwise, and watching the gauge on the right, you can watch it go right up. Now as you're using different tools, they do require different operating pressures. So something like an impact wrench, for example, it would be a good idea to turn this up almost to its max. But then certain things, let's say like an air nailer, might require a lot less pressure. So always check your manufacturer recommended specs so you don't overpressurize or underpressurize your tools. Here's a closer look at the back of the compressor and I do want to point out that the motor and pump assembly are going to be one unit. It's oil free and maintenance free and the only thing you'll need to do to operate it is plug it in the wall and turn it on. Now it's putting out 2.1 cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI, which is more than enough to operate most air tools, especially air nailers. Now that's something that many people are going to use with this, but if you do use it in a shop setting and you have other things plugged in the same circuit, the motor's only pulling 7.5 amps, so you can have multiple tools plugged in the same circuit and you're not going to pop any breakers. To turn it on, all you'll need to do is plug it in the wall and then this little red lever on the side, directly above the motor, you're going to flip that down to the auto position. And as soon as it reaches roughly 120 PSI, the motor is going to automatically cut off. As you use an air compressor, water will form inside the tanks. It's going to collect at the bottom of the lower tank, and if you notice on the front down here, it does have a ball valve pre-installed. To remove the water as well as the compressed air out of the tank, all you need to do is grab onto that knob, rotate it counterclockwise, and then it's going to remove all the water as well as the air from the tanks. Taking a look at a full-size 80-gallon air compressor, this is going to be much more ideal for heavy-duty automotive uses, but you want to keep in mind there are some drawbacks with it. Number one, you cannot move it around. It needs to be wired directly into your panel box by an electrician, and then the upfront costs are going to be much more. 
Aside from that, it also is going to be a lot louder. When we flip this on, you can hear exactly what I'm talking about. And compared to the noise levels of the Husky, there really is no comparison. When we take a look at the Husky compared to a standard steel tank version air compressor, you can see that the Hitachi is going to be a little bit shorter, however it's going to be a little bit longer. Now the big advantage of this over the Hitachi, of course, would be the weight savings. But because the Husky does have aluminum tanks, that's going to be impervious to water, however it's not going to be impervious to damage. If something fell on this, let's say at a construction site, the aluminum tank would really bend, break, or get dented where the steel tank would most likely just get scratched. Probably one of the biggest groups of people who are going to buy a compressor this size are going to be carpenters. Now what we're going to start out with is a full size framing nailer. I have three inch coated nails in this and we're going to see how it does sinking them into a standard 2x6. So that was single fire mode. Now let's see how it does with bump fire mode. And here it is, toenailing. For really tight areas, you can also use something like this pneumatic palm nailer. For me personally, I'll be using the compressor the most here in the workshop. Because it is so compact, it's going to fit directly under the workbench in space that was otherwise wasted. It's going to plug in a standard wall outlet. And then because it is so quiet, if I'm in here working with something like the pin nailer, even when it runs the air pressure down and the compressor needs to kick back on, it's not going to make enough noise to disturb anybody. It's also going to work for light duty automotive uses, like using the stubby impact wrench along with an impact socket to remove lug nuts in your driveway. Now there's a couple things you do want to keep in mind when you use an impact wrench like this, or really any air tool. Number one is going to be the length and diameter of your hose. Now this hose is going to be a 3 8 inch inside diameter hose and it's less than 50 feet long, preferably in that 25 foot range. If you use a very long hose, let's say 50 or 100 foot, or you use a quarter inch inside diameter hose like you would use with an air nailer, it's just not going to have the volume that you need to power something like this. And more importantly than that, you do want to make sure that your tanks are fully aired up. With this particular tank, using this impact wrench, I can remove between two and three lug nuts before the pressure is going to drop down enough that the compressor actually needs to kick back on. When you hear the compressor kicking on, you do want to stop using your air tool until it airs all the way back up so you're going to get maximum performance. Another really useful feature of having an air compressor at your house is the fact that you can go ahead and get a digital tire inflator like this one, or even a standard tire inflator, and then fill up your own tires in your own driveway. You don't need to go down to the gas station and feed quarters into the machine. All you'll need to do is hook this up to the airline, hook it onto your tire, and then you can make sure all the pressures are the same. So, now you've seen the Husky Silent Flow air compressor for yourself. And for general all-around use, carpentry work, or even light-duty automotive uses, this would be an ideal size to have. And if you're looking at a portable unit in this range, I think the Husky is going to have three main advantages. Number one, because it has that very lightweight aluminum tank on it, it means that the overall unit is going to be much easier to carry around. And unlike a steel tank that can really degrade over time by rusting from the inside out, what you want to keep in mind with the aluminum tank, it's going to be impervious to water, it's never going to rust, and even if you don't drain it out very often, you're not going to accidentally damage the unit. Number two is going to be the pump and the motor. They're extremely quiet, they're maintenance free, and they're oil free. So all you really need to do is plug it in and turn it on and you're going to be good to go. Because it is so quiet, you can talk on your phone, talk to somebody in person, or have it running in the same room as you, and it's not going to interrupt anybody. And number three is going to be the warranty. Now what you want to keep in mind, if you look at portable units, many of them will have a 90-day warranty, a one-year warranty, or even a two-year warranty. 
but the Husky includes a three-year warranty. And because Husky is the store brand at the Home Depot, if you ever do have a problem with it and it's within that time frame, all you'll need to do is bring the compressor and your proof of purchase in and they're going to fix or replace it for you free of charge. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.